Greetings to all of you and God bless you today. Hope everybody's doing well. Folks, I'm going to keep saying it every time I come on here. Jesus is coming and Jesus is coming one day very, very, very soon. Folks, as expected, since this Israel-Hamas war started on October 7th, the activity in and surrounding Damascus, Syria is off the charts. This is just in from the Times of Israel. Israeli strikes near Damascus overnight result in material losses. Let me read some of this to you guys. Israeli airstrikes hit several points on the outskirts of Damascus overnight, Syrian state media reported, resulting in some damage. The strikes hit in the area of the South Damascus suburb of Saida Zinab, if I'm saying that right, where there are military forces working with the Lebanese Hezbollah, the terror group backed by Iran. And then, just a few days before that, this was in from VOA. Israeli airstrikes put Damascus airport out of service again. Let me read some of this one to you. Israeli airstrikes Sunday, last Sunday, made Damascus airport inoperable just hours after flights resumed following a similar attack last month, a war monitor said, as state media also reported the attack. Israeli warplanes on Sunday afternoon carried out a new raid targeting Damascus International Airport, putting it out of service again, said the Britain-based Syrian Observatory for Human Rights. Now, why do I continue to cover stories like this and talk about what's happening? The massive uptick in Israeli airstrikes in and around Damascus, Syria, especially since October 7th? Well, I'll tell you why. Because over 2,500 years ago, the prophet Isaiah records in Isaiah chapter 17, verse 1, the following. The burden of Damascus. Behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city, and it shall be a ruinous heap. Isaiah makes it very clear that a time is coming when the city of Damascus, Syria, will be destroyed. It will be taken away from being a city. It shall be a ruinous heap. This prophecy has not been fulfilled yet. Damascus is one of the oldest inhabited cities in the entire world. Yes, there is parts of Damascus that are in bad shape. However, Damascus is not a heap of ruins right now. People still live and work and go about their everyday life in Damascus, Syria. But this prophecy makes it very clear that a time is coming when the city of Damascus, Syria, will be taken away from being a city. It shall be a ruinous heap. It will be destroyed. Isaiah even tells us when Damascus, Syria will be destroyed. In the same chapter, in Isaiah chapter 17, if you go down to verse 14, Isaiah records the following, And behold, at evening time trouble, and before the morning he is not. This is the portion of them that spoil us, and the lot of them that rob us. So very clearly, something is going to occur overnight in Damascus, Syria, that causes it to be taken away from being a city to become a ruinous heap. Something else that I want to point out that I think is very significant in regards to end times Bible prophecy, if you look at the map right here on the screen, you will see Damascus, Syria, Damascus, the capital of Syria, is north of Israel. And we know that right now we have Russian, Iranian, and Turkish troops all inside of Syria, just north of Israel on Israel's northern border. And we know according to Ezekiel chapter 38 and Ezekiel chapter 39, a time is coming in the future when there will be an invasion that occurs on Israel's northern border. And I like to call them the big three. Russia, Iran, and Turkey are a part of that alliance, that group of nations that will join together to attempt to invade Israel on its northern border. But we know according to Ezekiel chapter 38 and Ezekiel chapter 39, that it's going to end very badly for those nations that attempt to invade Israel on its northern border. But what's very interesting, if you look at Damascus, we know it's 
uh, north of Israel. And if we know Russian, Iranian, and Turkish troops are uh, surrounding Damascus, Syria, imagine what would happen if Israel takes out Damascus with Russian, Iranian, and Turkish troops in the area. You don't think that will be another catalyst to lead to that future Ezekiel 38, 39 invasion? Folks, the situation in Damascus, Syria is very critical right now because we know since October 7th, when the Israel-Hamas war started, and now we've seen others getting involved, including Hezbollah, which has over 150,000 missiles currently pointed at Israel. Uh, but we know since October 7th, the activity in and surrounding Damascus, Syria has been through the roof. We know Iran and its proxies, more specifically Hezbollah, are using Damascus, Syria as a hub of terror. They're using it because we've seen, what, over 80 Iranian cargo planes in the last 18 months land at Damascus International Airport. And what do you think's on those planes? Again, it's weapons to use against Israel. However, Damascus is the hub of terror that Iran and its proxies, again, more specifically Hezbollah, are using to distribute weapons and most likely chemical and nuclear material to use against Israel. We know that the IDF, the Israeli Defense Forces, warned Syria's president Bashar al-Assad because he's allowing this to happen. He's allowing Damascus, the capital of Syria, to be used as this hub of terror that Iran and its proxies can use all right, again, to distribute all these weapons and plan attacks against the nation of Israel. So we know the IDF warned Syria's president, Bashar al-Assad, that if Hezbollah, full force, joined the assault with Hamas and others against the nation of Israel, that Israel would destroy Damascus, and the main target would also be taking out Bashar al-Assad. And we know that generals have come forth and said that there is nuclear material underground in Damascus, Syria. We also know Bashar al-Assad has nuclear and chemical weapons in Damascus, Syria. Here's the bottom line, guys. We know that the war is going to get more intense in the coming days and weeks. And with that being said, we know that Damascus, the hub of terror, is going to be a lot more active because they're going to be moving weapons through uh, they're reloading so that they can, you know, launch fresh fresh attacks on Israel. Again, we know Hezbollah has over 150,000 missiles currently pointed at Israel. So we know that the Israeli airstrikes are going to continue. They're going to get more intense and more frequent surrounding Dam in and surrounding Damascus, Syria. And it is only a matter of time, folks, before something gets hit, whether nuclear or something else, that shouldn't be hit. And this prophecy will be fulfilled because the bottom line, it hasn't been fulfilled yet. Damascus still stands, but Isaiah chapter 17 verse 1 makes it very clear that it will become a heap of ruins. It'll be taken away from being a city. So what we're witnessing right now, folks, it is critical, and it shows what's about to happen. And if you're paying attention again, you will notice these airstrikes that continue to get more intense and more frequent, they are happening overnight in Damascus, Syria, because that's when Iran and its proxies are very active right in the middle of the night, moving these weapons and other stuff around. Um, but we know, according to Isaiah chapter 17, verse 14, that Damascus will be destroyed overnight. So the airstrikes are happening overnight, and we know the prophecy says it will be destroyed overnight. So you just connect all the dots, folks. Right now, it is a very critical and serious situation in Damascus, Syria. We know what the Bible says is coming. All we can do is watch and pray for the people in Damascus. There's brothers and sisters in Christ on this very channel that live in and around Damascus, Syria. And we do pray for you. We love you. But we know what is coming according to the pages of End Times Bible Prophecy. All I can tell you, if you're watching this video right now and you don't have Jesus Christ in your life, just look around the world at everything occurring and look at what your Bible says. You will see several things are true. The Bible is real. The Bible is alive. Jesus is real. Jesus is alive. And Jesus is coming back, and he's coming back one day very, very, very soon. This current world order, it is sinking, and it is sinking fast just like the Titanic. You need to get on the lightboat right here and right now. That lightboat 
is Jesus Christ and him alone. I'm not telling you to get religious. I'm telling you you could be saved right here, right now, as you're watching this video. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. So what do you have to do to be saved? The gospel of your salvation is found in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verses 1 to 4. Believe. You're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. The sin that, that you could never pay on your own. Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross at Calvary. So you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. So you're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. That's the gospel of your salvation. If you're still confused, here's the bottom line. Every single one of us is a sinner. We all miss the mark. We all fall short of the glory of God. And our sin separates us from a holy, a just, and a perfect God. But God loves you so much that he would come down. He would be born of a virgin. He became flesh. He dwelt among us. He was brutally tortured and crucified and shed his precious blood for you on that cross at Calvary. Again, the sin that, that you could never pay on your own. Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross so you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. That is love, my friends. That is love. The bottom line is this. Heaven and hell are very real, literal places. You will spend an eternity in one of those destinations. Hell's a real place. Eternal torment, eternal separation from God. I don't want you to go there. Jesus does not want you to go there. But if you die without Jesus Christ, you will be separated from God for eternity in hell. And I am going to tell you the truth because I love you. Jesus Christ is the only way to the kingdom of heaven and the only name that can save you. I am begging you, I am imploring you to get saved right now. Put your faith and your trust in the blood of Jesus Christ right now. Believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. And do it now because tomorrow is not promised. And make no mistake about it, Jesus is coming and he's coming one day very, very, very soon. Keep looking up, keep watching with me, and God bless you all.